So in this video, we're going to solve a linear system of equations in three variables where we have a unique solution. So again, the idea is to take your system and just like we did with the system in, in two variables, you first put it into matrix form. So here we've got x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three as our variables. So we're gonna have an x sub one, x sub two, x sub three, and a constants column. And we just read in the coefficients off the variables. So the first row is going to be one, 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 two, one, 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 two. So an augmented matrix. The second row is gonna be two, three, one, three, two, three, one, three and the third row is going to be one negative one negative two negative six one negative one negative two negative six we have the augmented matrix <clears throat> we need to put this matrix next into reduced row echelon form so the first row needs to have a leading one and it already does and we know when we have a leading one that everything above and below it needs to be a zero. So we look at this and we say, what do we need to do to get a zero here and a zero here? So to get a zero here, I would want to, I would want to add a negative two plus two to get zero. So I'm going to take negative two times row one and add it to row two, replacing row two with the result. And then once I'm done doing that, I'm gonna take negative one times row one plus row three and replace row three with the result. So I'll do the opposite of row one plus row three. So we're making no modifications to row one. So row one's gonna stay one, 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 two. And then I'm gonna do negative two times one is negative two plus two is zero. Negative two times one is negative two plus three is positive one negative two times one is negative two plus one is negative one negative two times two is negative four plus three is negative one and now we'll do negative the opposite of row one plus row two so we'll get the opposite of one plus one is zero the opposite of one plus negative one is negative two the opposite of one is negative one plus negative two is negative three the opposite of two is negative two plus negative six is negative eight. Now I have a leading one in row one. Everything above and below it is a zero. Now I need a leading one in row two, which I, I already have. So I need to get everything above and below it to be a zero. So it looks like we need to do the opposite of row two plus row one and replace row one with the result and then do positive two times row two plus row three and replace row three with the result. So in this case, row two isn't going to change. Row two is going to stay zero, one, negative one, negative one. And column one isn't going to be impacted by any of these moves. So we do negative two times one is negative two plus Oh, I have the uh, ne negative two, the opposite of row two plus row one. The opposite of row two plus row one is gonna be negative one plus one is zero. And then it's gonna be the opposite of negative one is positive one plus one is two. The opposite of negative one is one plus two is a three. And then we'll move to the next one, two times row two plus row three. So two times one is two plus negative two gives us that zero we wanted. So I should get zero there and there because that's the whole point of doing this. Two times negative one is negative two plus negative three is negative five. Two times negative one is negative two plus negative eight is negative 10. <clears throat> So now I have my leading one in each of the first two rows. This leading one is to the right of the previous leading one. I have zeros above and below those, so I'm working towards reduced row echelon form. Now I need a leading one in row three, so I'm going to need to multiply negative one fifth times row three and replace row three with that result. So I'm only making changes to row three right now, so row one stays the same, one, zero, two, three, row two will stay the same, zero, one, negative one, negative one, and row three will become zero, 
zero, negative one fifth times negative five is one, and negative one fifth times negative 10 is positive two. So now I have my leading one here, but so I need to get everything above and below this leading one at zero. So it looks like I can just take row three and add it to row two directly to get a zero here, replace row two with the result. And it looks like I need to do negative two times row three plus row one to get a zero right here. So right now I'm doing nothing to row three. Row three will stay the same, zero, zero, one, two. Our modifications are to rows one and two. So negative two <clears throat> times row three plus row one negative two times one is, uh, is negative two, plus two is zero. So this might as well fill in the stuff here that isn't going to change. So I'm gonna get a zero here. I should get zeros in both of these spots because right now we're trying to zero out the column. So I get negative two times negative one, sorry, negative two times positive one is negative two plus two is zero goes here. And then negative two times two is negative four plus three is going to be a negative one right here. And then row three plus row two is gonna be one plus negative one is the zero. And then two plus negative one is going to be a positive one. And now I'm in reduced row echelon form because I have leading ones in the appropriate places. Everything above and below a leading one is a zero. And now I need to go ahead and interpret the result. And I wanna recognize this is my X sub one column, my X sub two column, my X sub three, and my constants column. So this is saying X sub one, one X sub one equals negative one. So X sub one equals negative one. X sub two right here, one X sub two equals one. And right here, this is saying one X sub three equals a two. So the solution is the ordered triple negative one, one, two, because we're working in three dimensional space. Instead of ordered pairs, we have ordered triples x, y, z, or x sub one, x sub two, x sub three. It takes three coordinates to identify a location in three dimensional space.